Hello kind people of YouTube and welcome back to another video. Let's talk about the crypto markets and some news like we do every day, shall we? Um, I already uploaded another video earlier that was about Ripple XRP, some huge news coming out about that token. So make sure to check that. I will not be talking about Ripple at any length in this video. So if you're here only for that, sorry. I'm, I very much do not want my channel to become completely centered around one coin. So I'm making sure to um, to not always only talk about Ripple. And today we have a lot of other stuff to talk about. Let's start by refreshing the markets here quickly on Coin Market Cap, and we see very much the same, roughly the same um, market conditions from yesterday. Um, everything pretty much continuing in the same vein. Most tokens up or down by about 1% and not changing all that much in value. The market cap at 208 billion, that is just about where it was yesterday as well, with the 24 hour volume also at about 12 billion, which was once again was what it was yesterday. And Bitcoin dominance at 53% is also exactly what we saw yesterday. Most notably, Bitcoin Cash is still gaining significantly in value, has now gone up from $450 to $540 in value over just two days, and once again, 15% almost up today. That is absolutely significant. This comes after we got some clarification about who would be supporting which version of the upcoming November 15th hard fork, with um, some major crypto websites coming out in support of... Um, I believe it's the Bitcoin ABC or I forgot what they were called. But um, some some major websites came out in support of one version of the hard fork, which now gave people a lot more um, a lot more certainty about the near future of Bitcoin Cash, resulting in this significant movement to the upside. Aside from that, most things, as you can see in the green, but this is compared to exactly 24 hours ago yesterday when the market was slightly down. In general, if you're comparing to when I made a video yesterday, the markets are at about the same level. Um, XRP here, the only one that doesn't really seem to be moving at all. But important to keep in mind, minus 0.31% is pretty much nothing. That, that isn't anything to be worried about. And we see here, it's just, um, it's just been going sideways for a couple of days after falling a week ago and recovering most of that. But in general here, the market's just doing fine, not too much movement today, and Bitcoin Cash once again doing really, really well. I want to take a quick look at BAT as well. Yep, we see BAT here also still at 30, which is where it shot up to yesterday from 42 after they were added to Coinbase Pro, which I talked about in yesterday's video. So not that much movement over yesterday, but um, I'd rather see no movement than see the markets crashing. So in my book, this is all fine. Let's go through some news and analysis. And first up, we have a report here saying that Bitcoin is currently gaining strength. So let's read this. Um, all the links to these articles will, of course, be in the description. And in the description, you can also find ways to support the channel. You can find my social media pages and a bunch of other stuff. So do make sure to check out the description. A report published in October by One Alpha revealed that Bitcoin's market was gaining strength after the 2018 correction. The stability of the last weeks is a sign of maturity of the markets that seem to have passed the hype stages, both bullish and bearish, of the previous months. One Alpha is an Israeli firm, part of First Digital Assets Group, a fintech, a fintech that defines itself as the leading digital assets group in Europe. Keep in mind here that is their self-description. According to the report, the current bearish trend was necessary. This decline in the markets served as a relief and generated a cleansing effect on the ecosystem. The facts seem to prove the One Alpha team right. After the abnormal bullish streak of 2017, many people entered the market in an abrupt and immature way. The 2018 correction seems to have given Bitcoin back the stability needed to gain more credibility as a market instead of its previous bubble image. And they are quoting the report itself here. From our perspective, the prolonged bear market provided the sector with a much needed relief, lowering valuations to a more sensible level. Despite the considerable correction, a large portion of the value represents the future potential of the network rather than its current one. The December 2017 and January 2018 boom and bust had a cleansing effect on the ecosystem, removing many of the speculators and leaving mainly real investors, operators and builders in the market. This is what was necessary to move forward and build a successful ecosystem. I'm always so happy when I find a major report here saying something that I've been saying for months. We, when that boom happened in late 2017, we saw so many people moving frantically into the market. But that was dumb money. Those people, most of them, most of them, 
didn't really pay attention to what they were putting their money in. They didn't evaluate the real value of any of the projects that they put money in. They didn't consider the use cases of the tokens they were buying. It was just a bunch of money flowing in, but people weren't making intelligent choices. People weren't making smart investments. People just had an immense fear of missing out. So much money flew in and, um, and now after that bubble popped in early 2018, we saw a lot of those people move out of the markets and now who is left are only the people that know, not only, but um, primarily people that know what they're doing, that have a general understanding of the market. And this has now given the people to, that flooded in during the bubble and weren't uh, making intelligent investments then. It has given them time to learn about the markets, um, to read up, to make better decisions now. So in general, this long term is good for market health. And this is what I've been saying for a while. It's nice to see a major report like this um, come out with a similar valuation. The report is clear in dividing the cryptocurrency market into different branches. The first one is composed of well-known cryptocurrencies. For one alpha, 2018 has been a year during which Bitcoin has strengthened, recovering part of the influence taken away by other altcoins. And they're quoting the report again. Currently, Bitcoin is gaining strength and captures more than half of the total crypto, sorry, crypto market cap. Ethereum captures 10% of the total market cap. There are currently more than 2,000 traded crypto assets and more than 1,000 unique tokens worth around 14 billion US dollars. 87% of the tokens are Ethereum based, with NEO and Waves capturing around 2.4% each. Of this valuation, it is noticeable that Bitcoin captures about 71% of all currencies and Ether 54% of all platforms. The report also highlights the importance that ICOs have had in increasing interaction with the public, despite cases of fraud and constant failures. It also points out the increase in institutional investments and blockchain technology patents registered in China and the United States. The report gives a fairly positive view of the situation, considering the facts from a broad perspective. Market behavior in 2018 is, according to analysts, a natural and necessary reaction to the craziness of 2017. And one last time they are quoting the report directly here. We are experiencing a phase of sobriety and maturation, a decline in retail investment and a more careful, responsible approach from institutional investors on one hand and regulators around the world on the other. A long bear market might be the ideal climate to let the dust settle and examine, both internally and externally, the true possibilities that lay within the cryptocurrency and blockchain ecosystem. Ultimately, the goal is to take a step further and bridge the gap between consumers, traditional investors and blockchain technology. So this report, um, you can read it yourself. It is linked here. If you click this link, it will take you directly to the PDF file. And this article is, of course, linked in the description. So you will have the link to the report as well. It's a long report, but definitely worth reading. I pretty much fully agree with the assessment here, at least the parts quoted in this article. I've been saying for a while, I think 2018 is very much the year where we're setting up all the stuff that will help the markets in the long term. If you're looking just at the price movement, just at the market cap, it looks like 2018 is a disappointment. It looks like um, it looks like we're just losing and losing value. What I look at instead is all the development happening in the space. And that is what my channel is essentially about. Talking about all that development, talking about all the projects, talking about all the institutional money, all the new financial products, all the banks that are working with crypto, all the countries that are looking at crypto. All of that is happening this year like never before. We are getting so many pieces of important news every single day. Even I'm missing a lot of them and I'm spending a significant part of my day reading through news and making these videos about them. There's so much going on that even I'm missing a lot of it. So there's so much going on and all of that coming together will make the crypto market so much more healthy in the years to come. And it will be the basis for immense market growth in the next bull markets. And this, this report pretty much comes to that result as well. We had that boom, we had that boom explode. And now we had pretty much an entire year of just people just taking a, a, a reasonable stance, um, really assessing the future potential, preparing, building up the infrastructure. And now we are stronger than ever. And now continuing on to some news about an individual token. Ethereum. There's a new plan to build the hardware for Ethereum 2.0. The Ethereum Foundation is funding efforts to create specializing mining hardware in partnership with blockchain data storage network Filecoin. 
announced Thursday at DEF CON, the annual gathering of developers in Prague, Ethereum Foundation researcher Justin Drake unveiled preliminary designs for application-specific integrated circuits, or ACICs, that will support an upcoming Ethereum technology called the Beacon Chain. In essence, the Beacon Chain is a random number generator and is expected to form part of the next major iteration of the Ethereum network, Ethereum 2.0, under an alternative proof-of-stake consensus protocol compared to the proof-of-work approach utilized today. And this is, um, this is something we're seeing with a lot of coins and with the crypto markets in general, the move away from proof-of-work in favor of proof-of-stake. Um, there are many reasons for that, but one of the core reasons is simply that um, with proof-of-stake, you, um, you have major, major wastes of energy going on. And you, especially in a, in a climate change world, you really have to... Um, you really have to have an answer to why. Why when there's alternatives? And one of those alternatives is proof of stake, which is often also seen as a fairer way of, um, of spreading the money around, the new coins. Um, but we see this move in general with the crypto markets and some individual coins are also switching over, one of them being most notably probably Ethereum. While the term ASIC in the cryptocurrency space is more commonly associated with the technology applied to mining, the proposed Ethereum 2.0 hardware isn't engaging in that, computationally intensive process. Instead, these ASIC devices will engage in a comparatively less costly operation known as the verifiable uh, delay function. This helps to shuffle the validators that are intended to replace miners in Ethereum's proof-of-stake system. The idea is that the hardware will prevent any one individual or organization from coalescing enough power to overtake system operations. So very much battling with a weakness of decentralized systems that they can become overly centralized, uh, centralized if some people or one person has too much of the system under their control and can be attacked that way. This is meant to counteract that. All told, the project is estimated to cost between 20 million and 30 million dollars, according to Drake. That includes 15 to 25 million for research and development, as well as 5 million to build an estimated 5,000 machines. What's more, the Ethereum Foundation and Filecoin, which raised more than $250 million for an initial coin offering last year, will be splitting costs for project research and development 50-50. Their overall commitment could be reduced as Drake left the door open to the other blockchain projects contributing funds. Looking at the work ahead, Drake struck a positive tone, particularly the prospect of designing and implementing the plan in an open source fashion. Open source ASCIs haven't really been done before, so it's all very exciting for me, Drake remarked. So here we see a lot and a lot of research and money going into the future of Ethereum. Um, the Ethereum Foundation is really making sure to future-proof their technology, to, um, to not let their technology be left behind by time like Bitcoin has been. Uh, with Bitcoin, a big issue is that just technologically, the core blockchain is very much, um, has very much been innovated on by newer blockchains and just technologically kind of falls behind with a lot of sidechains and build, things built on top of it instead of actual updates to the core blockchain. And um, Ethereum is not doing that. Ethereum is trying very hard not to get into that same situation. And it's, it's wonderful to see this much development happening there. And most of it is always going in the right direction. Russia, considering a stablecoin. Well, one state of Russia. The chairman of Russia's State Duma Committee on Financial Markets has claimed that the entity is considering the launch of a state-backed cryptocurrency pact to the Russian ruble. Russian radio news station Govorit Moska, I probably mispronounced that, sorry about that, reported on Friday. Speaking at a press conference on the increase of the household debt load, chairman Anatoly Aksakov, I probably also mispronounced that, expressed his confidence that the government will back a cryptocurrency, but it will be a ruble-packed cryptocurrency. The deputy clarified that the implied coin will represent a blockchain-powered stablecoin packed one-to-one -to, -one to the ruble. Aksakov further described the model of creating the stablecoin, stating that the cryptocurrency will be backed by a banking deposit of a certain amount. After that, a banking situation is set to issue a corresponding amount of crypto assets by using blockchain technology and adhering to the 1.1-to-1 uh, proportion. According to Moscow-based news outlet Musk Agency, I probably also mispronounced that, the chairman has clarified that the cryptocurrency will be issued by the central bank since it's backed by fiat currency. In conclusion, Aksakov noted that the implementation of blockchain technology in terms of issuance crypto money is promising. In late October, he claimed that major cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin and Ethereum are doomed to a bleak future since they are knocked back by anything, adding that this was the reason for the recent amendment to the Russian draft law on digital financial assets, removing the definition of crypto mining from its purview. 
The idea of launching a Russian state-issued cryptocurrency dubbed the Crypto Ruble was announced in early 2018, with the Russian Association of Cryptocurrency and Blockchain claiming that the coin will be launched in the middle of 2019. However, most recently, presidential advisor Sergei Glaziev claimed that there is still no movement on the matter while stating that the existing problem grammatic rules could allow for very fast issues of cryptocurrency. So no news on the state ruble, uh, what exactly crypto ruble it was called, but we might be seeing a different Russian based stablecoin in the near future, also central bank issued. This is something interesting we're seeing in some countries where they're very, um, where they're very much cutting down on the rights of um, cryptocurrencies, on the legal situation of it, are pretty much trying to get rid of blockchain and cryptocurrency technology that they can't control themselves, and instead issuing a central bank um, stablecoin. We are seeing some movement to, in this direction in some countries. Um, unfortunately, it seems to also be countries that have problems with freedom of speech and freedom of the press. So this might be seen as an additional way to try and control the information flow within the country. But I don't want to imply any, any ulterior motives here where they might not actually be there. So for now, let's just see what, will t what this will turn out to be. We don't have that many details yet. And once again, the SEC in the news, they have released an enforcement report and ICOs, of course, the biggest controversy in 2018, just how much fraud has been going on with ICOs and how many countries have outright banned them. And the SEC is being very, very tough on them here. Despite the fact that the US Securities and Exchange Commission has yet to craft a clear regulatory framework for cryptocurrencies, the agency placed a great deal of emphasis on the space this year, particularly on initial coin offerings. The SEC's Division of Enforcement published its Financial Year 2018 Annual Report, the second one of its kind in which it spotlights its ability to crack down on fraud in the financial system and protect Main Street investors. This year, ICOs were a key theme throughout the document, as evidenced by nearly 30 mentions and an entire section dedicated to the agency's activity in identifying misconduct tied to digital assets and initial coin offerings as per the report. Given what the SEC described as an explosion of ICOs this year, they were selective in the deals that they pursued in an attempt to send the most effective message to issuers both in the US and internationally when they market to invest in US investors. Fundraising, meanwhile, is on the decline, with the tally for September failing to surpass 300 million versus 3 billion in January 2018. Perhaps it was the regulatory crackdown on ICOs in the US surrounding the registration of security tokens that has spooked issuers and influenced investors as registration violations were a key focus on the SEC's report. The SEC's influence over the ICO market this year, despite the lack of regulation, is apparent in the reversal of the trend in celebrity endorsements of token offerings, which the agency urged caution around and brought almost an immediate end to such promotions. The SEC says it's looking to strike a balance between prote protecting Main Street investors from fraud and scams without stifling innovation and legitimate capital formation. Taking a page out of former F F Fed chairman Alan Greenspan's book, the report also suggests exuberance around these markets can sometimes obscure the fact that these offerings are often high-risk investments. One of the key risks is something that has been well documented and it surrounds investing in a project with no history of performance or viable products, let alone revenue or adequate cybersecurity. Meanwhile, there is a pattern of issuers claiming to use blockchain technology but that are simply outright frauds cloaked in the veneer of emerging technology, the report says. Over the past year, the SEC has issued more than 12 standalone enforcement actions involving digital assets and ICOs, including deals that raised tens of millions of dollars from investors. Titanium Blockchain was one of them, which after raising $21 million in an ICO, was charged with allegedly falsifying information about key relationships with the likes of the Fed, PayPal and others. Another unnamed ICO allegedly promised a 13-fold profit in less than a month. In addition to ICO startups, the enforcement agency also pursued token lead, a token lot, which allegedly built itself as an ICO, super, um, ICO superstore, but operate as an unregistered broker dealer. There are several more similar cases, the severity of which range from instances of outright fraud to failing to register a token as a security properly. Meanwhile, dozens of investigations into ICOs and digital assets have been launched, a large number of which are still unfolding. The annual report section on ICOs and digital assets is featured before public company disclosures of cybersecurity risks and incidents under a larger subheading of policing cyber-related misconduct. The agency identifies the scams that it uncovered over the past year, all of which are listed at the end of the report. So we see here the SEC giving pretty much a lot of attention to, uh, attention to ICOs here. Um, ICOs are generally right now seen as one of the major hurdles we have to 
a regulatory environment that is fair and open to cryptocurrencies with a lot of people abusing ICOs to defraud people out of a lot of money or to make promises that they can't keep. Now, ICOs themselves, in my opinion, are a legitimate form of fundraising, but the issue is that right now there is no proper regulatory framework in most countries for them, and fraud is just rampant within them. So, um, while in general you will often find me being very critical of the SEC, as a lot of crypto investors and crypto YouTubers are, in this one case, I think they are perfectly right to, um, to come down heavily on ICOs to really go after the ones that abuse the system and sooner or later we will need a proper framework there. And for the last article of the day, we're talking about Ethereum once again and we got another report, this time looking at the technical side. A lack of diversity of Ethereum smart contracts poses a threat to Ethereum blockchain ecosystem, according to research by a group of analysts from Northeastern University and the University of Maryland released on October 31st. The paper entitled Analyzing Ethereum's Contract Topology claims that most Ethereum smart contracts are direct or near copies of other contracts, which represents a potential risk if a copied smart contract contains a vulnerable or buggy code. Partially supported by the US National Science Foundation, the study has analyzed Ethereum smart contracts bytecodes during its first 5 million blocks, which covers almost a 3 year time frame from the cryptocurrency's inception in 2018, uh, 15, sorry. The researchers have also collected and modified data via Ethereum's virtual machine dubbed GEF in order to lock all interactions between contracts and their users. To date, Ethereum smart contracts are 3 times more likely to be created by other contracts than by users, the study found. Moreover, over 60% of contracts have never been interacted with, while less than 10% of user-backed contracts are unique. The research stated that there is a significant reuse of code on Ethereum, which can allegedly have a widespread impact on the Ethereum user population, despite the fact that it is also likely a driving force behind Ethereum's success. Considering the low diversity of smart contracts on Ethereum as a potential risk to its whole blockchain ecosystem, the researchers mentioned that Ethereum has become a subject of high-profile bugs several times, resulting in over $170 million worth of cryptocurrency being frozen. The research concluded that multiple implementations of core contract functionality on Ethereum would eventually provide greater defense in depth to Ethereum. Developed by Vitalik Buterin, Ethereum is a public open source blockchain based platform that features smart contracts as well as its native cryptocurrency EFA. Launched on July 30th, 2015, Ethereum is now the second biggest cryptocurrency by market cap. No, 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 we know all this stuff. And we also know the frequent bugs that Ethereum unfortunately runs into. Now, this paper here, this is just a basic, um, a basic research paper from a university. They looked at an issue. This is not an attack on Ethereum. They are looking at a way an oversight in Ethereum's development could be abused or could harm the network in some way. Now, the main issue here is if if a lot of these smart contracts running on Ethereum are just carbon copies of each other, if people just took the code and copied it, and any of that code has issues, has, has backdoors in it, has bugs, has uh, vulnerabilities, that could either, either those bugs could cause harm to the system in some way, or in a more malicious way, somebody might be placing malicious code in there that could spread across the system. This is a legitimate danger. Um, I'm not a developer, so I'm unsure how they could deal with this. Um, to me, this seems very much like an issue that would be very hard to deal with at really um, at their level. I mean, they can't just say you can't copy contracts because um, a lot of people will just not put contracts on there if they can't just copy one because it's just significantly more work to um, code your own. But um, still, they, they will need to address this at some point because this is a legitimate risk to the platform, maybe not the biggest risk they face. Um, and it's most certainly not at the direct fault of the developers. Um, this is one of these unforeseen things that are, that are very easy to overlook that no one was thinking about really. At least I don't think anyone was really thinking about that. They had other stuff to worry about, but I hope that they will respond to this and react in some way. Um, I'm sure this paper includes some suggestions what they could do, because um, I don't know how many of you have worked in academia, have written research papers, but um, generally when you identify a problem and when you're doing research into a problem, what you will typically do is you will present some at least preliminary ideas of how that problem could be solved at the end. Because if you don't do that, your, um, your paper isn't being very constructive, uh, isn't being very productive. There's not much of a point to identifying a problem if you don't even start the discussion about possible solutions. So usually, I mean, that, that rarely makes up more than one or two pages of like a 20, 30 page paper. But generally, um, researchers are expected to at least mention some possible solutions. 
And um, I'm gonna assume that they did that here too, so that could be a starting point. But um, with that, gonna end today's video. Um, as always, thank you so much for watching. All these articles are linked in the description. What you'll also find in the description are ways to support the channel if you really like my stuff. For instance, you could support me in Patreon with one of three dollars a month. That is greatly appreciated. There are also links to my social media pages and all that stuff. Um, if you haven't already subscribed, make sure to subscribe. I put out at least one video every day where I go through all the news, go through the market developments and talk about it, read out the news, discuss it. Um, I'm, I think I do a pretty good job at keeping you guys updated. I hope I do. And um, as always, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.